Oh, I'm so excited to have okay, you. Sorry, a few minutes late. I've got the very glamorous uh, task today of getting a new fridge that's arriving. Oh, in so, oh that is glamorous. Love it. <laughs> have to sort that out. Don't worry. Um, thank you so much for doing it for us. No worries. Congratulations on everything. It sounds like it's all going really well and the launch looked uh, really fun. Oh yeah, it was. It was so much fun, wasn't it? We yeah. just had the best time. Yeah. And we've got the magazine in um, right there. And I I'm so excited. Well. Yay. And it's going in shops soon as well. So we'll be able to go and actually purchase it oh, in the big so shop. Nice. And also so nice to hear that because so much with print magazine, it's the other way around. So to actually hear like one going from like going into shops, because normally it's the yeah. other way around. So it's it's really, it's really nice for magazines. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And I think that's definitely the Laura Whitmore effect. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. But honestly, I know I said it, I said it to you, but like we had so much fun in that shoot. Like the guys were brilliant. Chris is brilliant. So we're going to talk a little bit first about imposter syndrome. Yeah. Um, what is your experience of imposter syndrome? Do you get it quite a lot? Or Yeah, it is something like I actually didn't really know the terminology of it when I was experiencing it like that's something I think I've always had I think most people even if they don't realize they have it from even you know going into school primary school into secondary school that kind of feeling of like I don't fit into groups and maybe it's just a human trait I mean if anyone doesn't have it I'd love to be you but I have yet to meet yeah. someone who hasn't experienced it to some degree so it's actually quite nice knowing that it's a it is a phenomenon it's called imposter syndrome and it's really common um and I constantly have it like always I don't think it ever goes away just feeling like you're out of your depth or you're chancing your arm like I you know some jobs I do I'm like why am I here like how yeah. did they, how have they let me in here even like starting the new Sunday show and you see your name like on because normally I work on shows and it's not my name in the show and I'm like oh I see my name here like I should belong here because it has my name in it but then you still are like this could this could go at any second um or someone could turn around and say you shouldn't be here uh and I actually I kind of was really interested in it and, and not to blab on too much about it because it should be simple answer. <laughs> but um, I actually did a bit of research in it because I mentioned it in my book and then I realized like I was like where did this come from like as a as a term and it was coined in the 70s by this woman um and it was to do more with um women in uh, financial like high finance jobs in the city because they were so far and few uh, between and they were surrounded by men probably talking about golf and things like that and they feel like so out of their depth and things like that they shouldn't belong there so she kind of coined this and then I guess as times progress um it's you know men can also have imposter syndrome but it's just it came from this concept of women in these high-powered jobs who belong there who had to work extra hard to get there but mm -hmm. feeling that they didn't fit in for some reason so yeah, I kind of, I welcome it in some ways because I guess it makes me constantly work harder and not get too cozy. But I think I would like to be able to enjoy myself a little bit more. I think sometimes we get overstressed too much. So I would like to maybe not have it as much. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like getting the balance between thinking, gosh, I'm I'm stretching myself. I'm doing a great job. Yeah. And I'm feeling like, oh, is this meant to be happening to me? Um but then feeling comfortable with it as well. It's it's so difficult. And yeah. you said there that, you know, it mainly happens to women. I actually really like feel that is the case. Um, so, I mean, we talk about it all the time as a team. Yeah, we? we were just talking about it, how our experiences differed because you've, Abby felt it quite um, young in life when she was say, just turned 21, but, um, I'm 26 now and I feel like I felt invincible at that age and yes. it's kind of crept in as I've got a little bit exactly. older so yeah. which way around do you think it was for you? I, th I think it can kind of sometimes happen in different ways um maybe maybe there's a thing of when you're younger you're I feel when I, I got my first telly job when I was 23 and I won a competition to be an MTV presenter which was just I entered a competition and I won it and I moved to London yeah. um and I think maybe there was, an, a, in a good way, a naivety and an enthusiasm where I didn't think too much, oh, how difficult is it to move to a new city and how expensive London is. Yeah. <laughs> so expensive. And 
And, you know, I, I had a year contract with MTV, which was lovely and on paper, great, but it probably didn't pay as well as any tele, tele job because I had no experience. So, you know, we de I definitely was in a house share with lots of other people, but I think I was so excited by it all. I didn't really overthink it too much. And I think in hindsight, I look back now and I'm like, oh my God, Jesus, like, <laughs> like, you know, now, now you kind of realize all the risks that was involved, but at the time I didn't realize the risk, which is probably yeah. a good thing because I mightn't have done it. Um, so I could like, in some ways, I think it's both to kind of answer because in some ways I'm a little bit more aware of risks sometimes. And maybe that's as well, as you get older and you've got a family, you've got, you're not just thinking about yourself because it was just me. And as you get older, like there's other people that are involved. So, so they come into it as well. Um, but then also when you get older, you don't give a shit as much about like what people think of you, which is lovely. Cause I think I cared more about what people thought of me when I was younger. So that was a different kind of imposter syndrome because you're too busy thinking about, do they think I don't belong? So it's not even, do I feel like I belong? It's like, yes. do they think I don't belong? Um, and I think that can change because you don't really care as much because you know yourself more. And I think that's a good thing about getting older as well. I definitely feel stronger in that. Not that like, I mean, other, other people's opinions definitely matter, but I just care less. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that you just said that. <laughs> I felt that so much and since I've sort of I mean I'm I'm nearly 30 and I can't wait to turn 30 and think you know I'm a woman I'm deserving of being here I'm confident in myself and I'm grown and I'm mature and I felt like through my 20s I was doing all these these different things that were scary and I thought they think I'm not supposed to be here but if that all lifted it probably would have been such a different experience for me because oh. I don't know. I'm, I was so conscious about what people thought of me. Um, and it's so different now. I, I think that I'm deserving of, of thing, good things to happen. Um, so, yeah, I love that you've just said that. What do you think about yeah. that? And you are a soft girl <laughs> through yes. and through. I am the nicest. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bit of a hindrance sometimes because I literally, I meet people and I feel like I connect with people really, really quickly. And I'm like, we're going to be best friends forever. And then I'm like, oh, all these different like opportunities I've said, and I've committed myself to lots of different things. And I'm so busy all the time. And I'm like, oh, I'm I'm so nice. I just let myself <laughs> get ahead of it. Um, yeah. Have you heard of the soft girl approach before? Tell me about the soft girl approach. I'm really intrigued by this because <laughs> one, one friend I think being called soft is like a negative, but tell me about the soft girl. Yeah. Yeah. So I think a soft, a soft girl is a positive yeah. description for someone. Yeah. So in issue one, I did an article all about, well, being the, it was called the art of being a nice girl. And I was the one who sort of sat back and observed and it was really nice to people. And I feel like, it did me well um, yeah. because being nice to people always leaves people with a positive view of you and the door is always left open. And, yeah. you know, like you said in your article, work hard and be nice to people is yeah. such an important thing. And uh, I mean, it's a big thing on TikTok, soft girl approach, isn't it? Yeah, I think a lot of people say, obviously, being nice gets you nowhere, but we really do think being nice gets you somewhere because it's it's got us exactly where we are with the magazine and yeah. everything. So. Yes, and also people want to work with, like for both of you, like yeah. Millie as well. Like people just like we just want to be around nice people. But I do. Yeah. I actually, was, it's so funny that we're talking about this now because I was um, talking to a therapist that I use sometimes, especially when I'm trying to juggle work and everything. And I and sometimes I feel I had this thing of like, are you being too nice because you don't want to be walked over, like walked over by sometimes saying yes to everything or um there's a difference between being a soft girl and just doing what others want you to do and it's like yes. kind of getting that right because sometimes I hate letting people down and sometimes to my detriment that I end up like spreading myself too thinly because I'll say yes to everything and then I'm like I can't like what you were saying Abigail, like you, I, I say yes to everything and then you then you're no use to anyone because you've taken on too much so it's you could it's kind of balancing that in, in some degree but what you said like I've worked in this industry for like 14 15 years now it's since when I won that MTV competition and like some of the people I met the first day at MTV are, are still my like closest friends today and we work in other circles because the people who were work experience and runners when I was doing my first telly job are now my producers on other networks and yeah. we all just want to work with nice people and I always like it's always lovely when 
someone turns around and like, like recently I've I've been up for this job because someone's like I really like working with Laura she's like easy to work with and professional and and, and does and 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 fun and it's like someone said that I was like oh someone actually said that it's so nice when someone says it in writing but then there's also an element where I feel in the past I've definitely I've learned to stand up for myself if I'm not happy about something and it's that balance you can still be a nice girl and a soft girl but also know when to say no to something and it's getting that balance right yeah yeah it's like a full devil wears prada film yes. like, are you Anne hathaway or are yes. you miranda priestley either or you can kind of be a bit of both do you know yeah. and that's the way in the end she had bites you know she was she, she was able to work. yeah she did i love that halfway at the end of that film yeah. you know, and she like threw the phone into the the fountain she's like right. see you later miranda <laughs> <laughs> yeah brilliant <laughs> Yeah, I find it really difficult to say no to people and also to to stand my ground because I feel like I, I'm such a people pleaser. And it's happened recently where I was sort of I was put in a position where I was going to be the one not getting the better side of the deal. And I had to say face to face, I'm not happy about that. And it took me a good five minutes of, of being like, okay then okay okay and then I had to think Abby this is your moment to say no and stand up for yourself and it just has to happen a couple of times and then you sort of you think it's okay to say no yeah Yeah. how did you feel after you said no like how did you you feel anxious or like after you kind of said it I felt really anxious at first and then after the conversation and I and I left I thought if I hadn't done that right now, I'd be feeling so much worse because I'd have got the bum end of that deal. Yeah. Um. So I'm I'm really glad that I stood up for myself, and I yeah. I hope that happens in future. That's a lesson learned right there for me. Yeah. And constantly, you constantly, no matter what age, whether you like you hit your thirties and then or your forties or your fifties, and like as you go on and on, we're still constantly, you know, learning things about ourselves and learning what's mm. right and what's not right. And yeah, I've done those things before when I've. Be, and it's waiting for the right time because I think when you start out in this industry you kind of say yes to everything because you have yeah. to and then you kind of gain a momentum and you know even probably with the magazine as well like when you're first starting with the first issue compared to like this issue like there's different you kind of get a little bit more power in the type of articles that you can write um mm. and the type of shoots that you want to do um and and I, there's something lovely in that too because I feel like as you gain your power you can choose when to say no but maybe at the start it's hard to say no but then you get to the stage where like actually now I can say no to stuff um but I can also make it better for other people as well and and change the landscape but whether it's to like making magazines and yeah. and that's exciting too to understand the power you have because you probably didn't realize that you can actually be powerful in that room by saying no yeah yeah absolutely and we struggle with that, don't we? Still, with so many people submit pieces for the magazine, and I know that must that. be hard because you kind it's of so other hard. Work. Like, yeah, yeah, and and you feel like you're their step into the industry, or you're their going to be their first article on their CV that might get them yeah. somewhere. And you think if I if I say no or I don't like what they've written. I'm such a horrible person, but it's, we want this. You will make them better because then they'll go around and they'll make a, if they take that on board, if it's not good enough, they'll come back and they'll write something better rather than like, it's cutthroat out there. Like, you know, you can't get into this by writing something mediocre. You kind of have to, so yeah. actually it's probably better in the long run, but it's still, it's, oh my God, it's still, <laughs> I, do you know, I remember years ago, um, so I won a competition called Pick Me MTV and about, three years into working in MTV, maybe two or three years, I got sent to New Zealand to be a judge, a guest judge on Pick Me MTV New Zealand. So oh. I could be a judge for people presenting. And it was so hard because I know what it feels like to even just stand in front of people in front of a camera is terrifying the first time you do it. So I found that really hard. So it's probably similar in your like reading other people's work. I'm like, who am I to judge? Like, Yeah, I mean, we've been invited down to Graduate Fashion Week to judge graduate magazines in a couple of weeks yeah what are we gonna be like <laughs> I was only there you're great you're great you're great I'm talking about imposter syndrome yeah I'm like I'm like yeah you're great you're great you're great 
<laughs> yeah. You realize you, you know you put together like a really successful magazine. Like you know more than you think you know. You know? And I'm the same. But like when I was presenting, like oh, I won that competition, and I've been doing this for three years. I, I had a year's contract, and I'm still doing it. So I do have authority to be here. So I actually do have the experience. You just have to keep reminding yourself that you do have an opinion that's valid. Yeah, it's like we get that. Um, we call it Sunday scaries, don't we? Like the night before you do something, like the night before the podcast, uh, we I was tossing and turning a bit. Yeah. And oh. even on a normal Sunday night before you go to work, I mean, I know you yeah. work all your Sundays. On a, on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Whichever your Sunday you know, night I never is. get it. I never get like a Sunday night because I, I work a lot weekends and I just work because I'm freelance. I end up working like pretty much every day, but I might have like a Monday off or a Tuesday off yeah um, that's nice so it's weird but then I I might get the anxiety on on a Friday night <laughs> yeah <laughs> so how do you sort of like I mean your week's obviously different to ours but how do you um reset for your week so is there a point where you think right let's let's either get a notebook out and, and make notes or you know have a bath and think about things like what do you do to do that I'm still trying to work out the, the things that help me. Um, I, like as a, I've got a two-year-old, so like that kind of really <laughs> grounds you in some ways because my week, although it, it can be spontaneous in a way in that like, so later today, I'm meant to be going for a fitting for a job I'm doing at the weekend, but the clothes didn't arrive. So that I just found out late last night, it's going to be on Thursday, but then I'm filming all day tomorrow. And then I, I fly to Ireland on Friday and then I'm back to London Saturday. And it's been changing around so much that I'm, sometimes I look at the diary, I'm like, how am I going to make this work? But then I have this consistency of this toddler that needs love and attention and care, um, like constantly. So that has to be my main priority. And in a way that has kind of helped me with a routine it should it also adds a lot more stress but it has kind of helped me in many ways but then bedtime for her is the same time every night and as soon as bedtime happens then it's Laura time so <laughs> I'm not if I'm not working I have a DJ job tonight but if I'm not working it's the bath it's the bath yeah. or it's a book or it's a light a candle or like I feel like smells can be quite triggering like in a good way that if you put on like a lavender or some sort of certain scents I have from different brands that I'm like if I light that candle that will really chill me out or that one can be quite Ooh. stimulating um or like Epsom salts in the bath or just little little things like that or um me and my husband at the moment we're like torn between different shows that we watch but if we love selling sunset and that's our like we do not want to think about anything for half an hour (laughs) and then other times we put on like a psychological thriller or a true crime so it's just finding those little things that can be in your routine that aren't too hard to do or going for a walk walking the dog like little things like that would just be okay get away from your phone and reset for a minute yeah oh I love that I mean when you talked then about um sense I have um a scent that I wore for my wedding day uh, mm. last year and sometimes I mean I don't ever want to use it up but sometimes I just spray it and it takes me straight back and I feel in a way in a way I feel calm and supported and when you said about sense there that absolutely resonates with me completely yeah. um you mentioned um there about motherhood we've actually yeah. had a question um from a couple of followers on Instagram and one of them is about motherhood always really um apprehensive to give too much advice on motherhood because I feel Mm. like it's such a personal journey and from my own experiences everyone had an opinion like I was walking down the street and someone would tell me about what type of childbirth or what type of birth I should have like oh you should definitely you should definitely do this and you should definitely do that and you shouldn't do this and I, I was just like so even now when like my really good friends tell me they're pregnant I'm like I'm here if you want advice just ask but I'm very wary of like giving it yes <laughs> if it's not asked for because there's a lot of opinions online there's a lot of opinions even in like friends and family you know even within our family everyone will have an opinion so the lessons I've learned is like not to listen to people unless you want to um, yeah. and don't, don't listen to advice of someone um that you wouldn't want to follow you know because you're, you're like oh they told me I should do this but I actually don't really want to live that way like at, at each to their own so it's kind of to ask for ask for advice when you need it I don't know if there's three here listen to yourself um and also it's such a personal experience and there's that balance as well of like I had that 
of like how much do you share how much do you not share and there's no right or wrong answer um I've been quite private with it because that's how I like to keep it but I've got other friends who like put everything up online and like that's fine too so there's no right or wrong way of motherhood it's just finding what works for you um, and then there's, there's always white noise ar around I think I don't know how many I've given you now probably four or five <laughs> there's so much white noise that you can just shut it off and and be in your be in your little bubble and you're if you're lucky enough to have family around you um or your parents still around like you kind of forget that like like my mom had a child like I forgot that like you know sometimes when you have a child I'm like oh she's done this I forgot you've done this because I'm here so yeah it's kind of using those people in your in your circle of trust if you're yeah. looking mm -hmm. yeah absolutely I love that um do you want to ask any more questions or um just quite a fun one really favorite yeah. ever fashion moment <gasps> oh love, love so lovely. um I'm so lucky I get to wear such nice clothes um there's been a few I guess if you kind of go back to like even when I first started like when I first started on MTV I had a clue what I was doing there was no hair and makeup or budgets for clothes um this is not my finest but I just just to give you an example I remember I was working at the MTV York Music Awards and they were in Liverpool in 2000 and a million years ago I can't even remember when it was 2009 probably um it was like my first big red carpet and I just borrowed I'd no I'd, I'd like a minimum clothes and I was just in this house share and one of my friends who I went to university with and she was living in London um at the time working for an ad agency I just went over to her, her house and I borrowed this like top shop dress that she had that I like I couldn't afford or I didn't even have any other clothes something I hadn't worn before and actually that's the ultimate sustainability borrowing clothes yes. so I remember, and I was over for, I was going to Liverpool for a week and every day I was like hosting these segment pieces for MTV Europe so I just went with a suit a bag and just put like all her wardrobe <laughs> and I had this brand new wardrobe never seen before on telly um so that was I'm kind of proud for that because I'm like mm -hmm. that's using um good initiative there um but then the, the it's, it's funny because then the more you kind of get known and the better you do then designers lend you stuff mm -hmm. I was like I could have done with your help a few years ago <laughs> yeah. um so there's been there's been quite a few um like getting to go to the BAFTAs and being on the red carpet there I've worn some brilliant dresses I wore this green dress that was actually made for me so it fitted perfectly it was by Su Suzanne Neville um it fitted Ooh. perfectly and then there's a a great designer Theodore Golan um they have they've individual uh, labels now and they gave me this yellow little dress for the L style awards like I was like a little chicken but like in a cute way <laughs> um, and they're like um I remember seeing them in fashion week and and following them and then I ended up walking for um a friend of mine Bora Aksu during fashion week and I, I it was so mad to, to go from that girl who was borrowing her friend's clothes in a suitcase to then having designers give you clothes and yeah. and even like at the um, BAFTAs this year uh I wore this really gorgeous I have a stylist now like it's mad and it's like I, I'm very I know what I like clothes wise but Emma is brilliant like as, as I worked with for this shoot like mm -hmm. Emma just knows what I like now because we've been together for so many years so it's kind of um we really are able to kind of work together and it's a meeting of minds um yes yeah, so we wore this, I wore this lovely Galvin dress um and you know what the Love Island suit the red suit with the heart oh, like oh, I got it. for me it was my way of doing Love Island because I was like I'm gonna do it in a suit you know yes oh um, I love that it was and, iconic and you had the Mary Benson as well that oh and Mary, I, mean, I wore, wore Mary um for Love Island as well uh I wore her I actually have quite a few of her dresses but there's um a orange and yellow pink kind of short one with a little sleeve she does that gorgeous those yes. kind of iconic pieces with her shoulders which I think are very Mary um so yeah and I love I love that as well I especially love independent brands to be able to support them as much as possible mm -hmm. yeah I mean, I I'm, I'm, you're like name one fashion moment and just like half an hour later that's then, what we wanted <laughs> I also wore fashion awards last year I wore um a, a guy Graham Cruz who's Irish who I worked with years ago and he makes these body suits and he did one for Beyonce and I wore one of his that fits oh. and I wore a pair of trousers I'm just so lucky now I just, and I love having fun with it I think this is so much fun yeah you have such great style like when we look when we saw the the balaclava moment on the cover 
I was like, see so you much fun. You know what? Do you know what's really weird? Because in my, the reference I had in my head when I saw that, I was like, Emma, can I put this hat on? I was like, Emma, I know this sounds mad, but can I wear this hat with this suit? Um, and it's really weird because I think the picture is in the magazine, like brilliant Vivian Westwood um, who sadly passed away. I think you've got a picture. There's a really iconic picture of her with this like kind of hat thing on her. Yes. Um, in the magazine because I remember flipping it is, it is in the magazine <laughs> it's so weird because that's the reference I had of the <laughs> the look um which is weird creepy great minds yeah oh I love it um so have we got time for anything else um really no. we just want to know about anything upcoming that you've got anything you want to share with us any little secret projects Ooh. you want to yeah well I'm really excited because th this I did obviously the magazine Sunday Girl um kind of talking about the launch of the telly show um and I had a Sunday radio show for so long and then kind of got to do the dream of kind of bringing it to, to TV and I'm over halfway through this series uh, which I've loved and it's like a summer series so I really hope that we get to do it next year um I've got a doc series that's coming out in July I don't even know if I've told people it's July but it's coming out in July which is soon um, so that's been quite intense because this it's very different to a lot of the shows I've worked on before. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of going back to my journalistic roots um, and some topics that I think are really important. Everything from cyber stalking to rough sex to incels. Um, so that's been a huge learning curve. Again, mm -hmm. like quite exhausting as well emotionally yeah. to go through that. But it's something that I feel really proud to be a part of. Um, so that's exciting. And then actually this next week or at the end of this week at some point, um, I'm filming a little acting thing because I, I went and did a play for a few months um, and I'm very much wanting to kind of still keep my toe in that. So I'm doing something for a series that will be on Channel 4. Um, I'm filming that. So yeah, it's good. It's the juggle. And then I'll be having a bath at some stage. Just <laughs> bath and some salt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get some salt in there. Oh, amazing. I'm so excited to watch the documentary series. That is going to be incredible. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Ah, uh, thank you, girls. We Honestly, it's so lovely like, to see you like in real life. Well, not in real life, but like your faces via Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we've absolutely loved it. This has been a pinch me moment for us. Yeah. It? One to add to the list. <laughs> One to add to the list. So honestly, you girls are absolutely <laughs> rocking it, like killing it. So congrats. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank I mean what can we even say about you you know you are absolutely smashing it we we love oh. you so much thank oh, you oh thank you and thank um, you very much for the support like I always always very appreciative and likewise as well thank you and have a wonderful day I hope the fridge gets installed I know I'm so excited <laughs> now I've just moved house so it's like yes we've got a fridge <laughs> yes. yeah thank you so much yeah. we'll chat Bye. to you soon